David Chacon, I'm the uh, chair of the Land Use Committee. Uh, I want to first off thank you guys for uh, coming here, even though it's you know very cold, wet, and slippery outside. Uh, we are missing one person. We're missing Peter Swapa, uh, but we do have one. So we do have a quorum. So we are going to start today at six. You know, we we'll start time with six thirty-three. Uh, a little late, but it's fine. Uh, so just wanted to say welcome and thank you for coming. I know it's. Uh, it was a short notice, but uh, uh, you guys have very, very busy schedules. But uh, we were—I was finishing with the agenda up until the last minute, like literally the last minute. So uh, I will strive to do better in, in uh, getting a better, uh, better time lined up for uh, for the agendas. Uh, on for the meantime, I, I, will, I will open up the uh, the, uh, the room to any comments from any stakeholders that are not related to items on the agenda. So you guys get you guys get three minutes. Uh, if you guys want to say something, oh, let you go. So, anyone have anything to? No questions, no comments. I do. Oh yes. Yeah. Hi. My name is Manny Hernandez, and I'm a stakeholder in this community. Mm -hmm. And I'm very upset with a particular member of this community that puts out the information on this. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with libraries. It has libraries. That puts out this information on on this meeting and then puts the statement out. Anybody know of a good attorney? Open mind people, that's what we're here for. We're not here for dictation. Do you hear one person's, anybody know of a good attorney? No, we're, we're the stakeholders of the community. It's not run by one person. And I'm sick and tired of hearing anybody know of a good attorney. That's my two cents, thank you. Okay, thank you Manny. All right, okay. Uh, our third person, Peter Spoto, has arrived. So we have Bull, Willie, who, Quorum. All right. Uh, I will. Are you guys ready for? Yeah, we should be. Okay. So, one in order. It's one, so. Yeah, we're going in order. Just make that. So. Yeah. So our first, our first uh, presentation will be by uh, Vista Tereno, right? Mm -hmm. Well, the first part is to be called Vista Tereno. Right. So. Uh, Sorry, I'm getting my tablet set up. Sorry about that. Yeah, 
so we know what you want to do. Alright, sorry guys, I was, I was I'm just in jury duty today, so we went from downtown to here, so. Alright, okay, so, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, so the first project we have is called, is, it's a presentation of, uh, the project site is called Vista El Sereno. It's a 42 unit small lot project of single family homes at 2520 Northeastern Avenue, Los Angeles, California, 90022. Uh, the project site consists of a 218,532 square foot lot, uh, bounded by the, by the streets of uh, Lombardi to the north, single family homes to the, uh, to the east and the south, and then Eastern Avenue to the west. Our presenters here were right in New York. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Rob Flinton. Uh, I'm here with a few people. Alan Scales is our architect. The gentleman in the white sweater is Abraham Ricardo of Consensus. Leah Beniston is my colleague at True Life Companies. And Josh Gertler beside her with Consensus. And David here with Consensus. So we're going to break this into three or four easy chunks. So uh, it won't take long. We just want to talk, break the talk into three or four little pieces. Um, we're a land development company. We, we came into the project last fall um, and um, wanted to take over the development of it, the approval of it. And so we've spent quite a considerable amount of time, obviously, pouring through, you know, what the history of it is. It's been around for a little while, and it's sort of delayed for a little while. And we spend a lot of time in the community, countless hours, actually, talking to people in the city or in the community. And um, basically, we do have a proposal that we want to get approved. The site is developable. It will be developed into something at some point. So what we wanted to do is make sure that we do something that is as appealing and pleasing as possible to our neighbors, because we like to be good neighbors. It's really important to us. So we heard a lot of the issues that were spoken about. Hopefully we're going to touch on them tonight. If there's an issue we're missing, you're really welcome, to, honestly, to tell us what you think an issue we might have missed is, but we're going to try and touch on all of them pretty quickly. And so the, everyone knows where the project is, I think. And if you don't, this is a map that said Lombardy and Eastern across from the two schools there. Um, next slide. Here. Sort of a, a visual looking down on top of it. It's a bit of a hillside, um, pretty steep slopes around it. And then on the top, it's already been graded off. There was a prior structure up there quite a few years ago. And it's gone now. And, and basically, um, next slide. Would you like a have a pointer. Well, we've got one. You need I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. But um, as was discussed, we're proposing this be developed into a 42 lot subdivision. And these will be single family homes. So instead of using the by right zoning that's there, we're asking you to rezone the property because that's the only way to make it friendlier, frankly, into single family homes that are harmonious with the, what's already in the neighborhood. And we've taken great care to do that. And I think you'll be pleased with what you see tonight, especially for what we've developed and changed over the last few months. Um, next slide. So what we've done, the items on the left are things wow. that we've sort of directly attacked or, and dealt with. Number one, there was a concern about trees. So we're actually leaving some 36 or 37 extra trees than we would have in the prior plan. We're going to get to the site plan in a minute. And we've rearranged the entire site plan to make it better internally, to produce better architecture, to leave a substantial bigger open space belt on the property. And actually we're only going to be using about 20% of the property for the actual footprints of the homes, which is remarkably low. We lessened the unit count by one, modified the open space, um, and basically moved the project entrance a little bit further north so it's away from the corner. And, and Alan, and we asked him to speak in a few minutes, we'll show you how all of that developed. And our basic goal here was to get, you know, sort of an attainable housing project, we call it, to make sure that this is it's going to be market for sale housing and we wanted to make it as, as, as accessible as possible to a, a wide market. Some of the other concerns we've heard about, which we're happy to talk about, are affordability, pedestrian safety, there will be questions about grading impacts, construction. Um, a lot of people have expressed concern to us that there's vagrancy there and illegal dumping and there's tents up there and you know it's sort of become this dangerous place we've heard from quite a few people as well. And you're going to want to know a little bit about noises and emissions that might happen while we're building the subdivision. Um, so one of the things also is that, you know, because I know there may be some laymen here that not don't understand the process, but 
This project's also already gone through an extensive review of uh, CEQA process. And um, there's a 220 some odd page uh, determination by the city. It's their report that they concluded. We didn't provide the report, they provided the report. And it's gone through exhaustive studies on a whole wide variety of impacts and issues. And that report is the city's report. And I understand that some people uh, might have concerns or criticisms about you know certain things that they perceive, but hopefully the issues we mm -hmm. talked about a minute ago, which some of them are CEQA issues, would be something you might want to ask us about or talk about. But basically in terms of the report and, and, and the city, they've determined that the way we're proposing the site properly and effectively mitigates any potential problems or impacts we may be making. And uh, so that was a long process, if anybody knows how that goes. There's a lot of reports that they distill, and that's what the city's document is. It's not our document. It's their proposal. So basically, one of the real things that we try to do here, and I'm going to pass this off to Alan in a second to show you this, is that we really wanted to soften the approach with how we approach the neighborhood. You know, we're contributing a lot here. We're going to be doing uh, a substantial amount of economic benefit. The, the, the site's going to produce an extra more than half a million dollars in new property taxes. We're going to be paying more than $450,000 in park fees. We've talked with the council <coughs> member's office about per, potentially directing that at one of the parks nearby or, or something of that nature. And uh, through consensus, this company we're here with tonight, we've done and will continue to do, actually, a lot of outreach was done in the past in the community. We're going to be doing even more. Uh, we have a website that's coming up pretty quickly, which they'll talk about. And then we also wanted to show you that this is subtle, but we took the character of the neighborhood in the area, all of the existing homes. And there's been homes built on hills in this neighborhood for decades. So hill construction is nothing new here. But we hired one of the finest architectural firms in the business to make sure that we maintain and establish the existing character of the neighborhood so that no one would feel like we're sort of displacing what's already there or, or, or you know, ruling over what's already there. We're trying to be as, frankly, attuned to what is there as we possibly can while bringing economic growth and opportunity. Um, and then I would also like to add that, um, I just lost my train of thought. Yeah, can't be that important. <laughs> I'll come back to it in a sec. But um, anyway, I'll let Alan talk about the site plan that we has been changed and the architecture. Uh, but right before I do that, this is where the entrance changed. Someone had brought that up before in the past. We moved it forward, probably the depth of a full single family lot away from that intersection, if anybody knows that intersection, because we had heard that as a concern. And he'll explain the other reasons why we did that. Next slide. And there's the, uh, the revised site layout. The area in green basically amounts to 30% of the site. And we're going to be planting, I think the number is close to 160 brand new trees on that hillside. And we're removing, I think, 37 or 38 trees and replacing them with about four to one. And by my view, and I was up there a couple weeks ago with the arborist, the trees that are there aren't really all what you would call healthy tree stock. <laughs> so I actually had him research all of the nurseries in the area recently. And uh, he's pretty pleased with the available tree stock that is already growing that will be mature enough to plant at that time. And we've prepared a, a letter in support of that. Mr. Alan Scales, if you could back up one, that'd be great. Thank you again. My name is Alan Scales. Uh, I'm an architect and principal of KTGY Group. I've been with KTGY for 18 years now and have had the pleasure of working through the design of quite a few neighborhoods in the city of Los Angeles. So. Um, what I'd like to do is show you a little bit of what we're doing tonight and talk a little bit about the changes that we've made based on what we've heard through the various com community meetings to date. Um, this site plan, as uh, was just mentioned by Rob, the real driver here in what's created this site plan was to create more hillside open space, preserving trees, etc. As uh, Rob mentioned, 30% of the site area is in this hillside area. If you begin to add additional open spaces within front yards and rear yards, we're getting to 65% of the site area as open space. So again, looking at minimizing the impact and preserving hillside. Again, this hillside, as you all know, is a main 
focal point, if you will, to the eastern uh, street zone. So we're preserving that, and that really influences the location of the homes. And outside of that, we really wanted to look at neighborhood patterns and create a more traditional neighborhood street scene um, as we develop the site plan. Uh, well, as was mentioned uh, moments ago, the entry had previously been adjacent to our southern parcel uh, boundary. We've pushed that over. We've created a, a buffer of landscaping and rear yards to adjacent neighbors. Uh, we also have another entry off of Lombardi here that will serve these four homes. Uh, but due to the nature of the grades, the majority of the homes will be coming in through Eastern. Um, but part of that design in creating compatibility with the existing neighborhoods is creating a tree-lined street, a traditional neighborhood street scene. Uh, previously, uh, the application showed more of uh, an alley, if you will, with short aprons, not a lot of room for landscaping. Um, we think this is a great benefit, a great change to create neighborhood. So as you can see, coming in through this entry, we have wide spaces between the fronts. The yellow or, or brown color are the homes themselves. And you can see there's a wide space there for not only the main circulation, but the landscaping, and also driveway spaces that would serve, again, to fit into the existing context yeah. of the neighborhood. Not only do we provide the landscaping, the driveways obviously part additional cars than what was previously on the site. Initially, the site had code minimum of about 12 to 14 guest parking spaces. This site will have 68 total cars outside of the garages. If you count up the driveway spaces, we are providing plenty of space for for guests and residents, or what you might think of as, uh, you know, washing your car on a Sunday uh, afternoon. Um, in addition, each home will have a two-car private garage. Those garages would have direct access into the homes as well. So again, the drivers are providing open space and preserving trees along the eastern edge, and then creating that neighborhood feel. Um, of course, in the design of the homes, we are fronting, as you, if you will, the, the, the uh, private street that we provide. So front doors, primary windows, look to that neighborhood street. Um, not only does that provide an eyes on the street effect, it also, with front doors on the street, activates. So you get the pedestrian movement from the guest parking into the front doors of these homes. So again, all in all, really trying to go for a traditional neighborhood feel. If you can move on to the next slide. This is looking along Eastern. Previous application, I believe we had five or six homes that were along Eastern. We now only have two that, if we back up just one second so I can orient everyone. We back up one. Yeah, sorry. So we have two homes that would be on Eastern, and as you move, so the next slide, we're seeing just the front of this home. But more importantly, what we're seeing, if you slide, go to the next slide, you're seeing what's happening with the hillside. So again, as uh, Rob pointed out, lots of new planting, lots of existing trees that will be preserved on this slope. So you're really, you're seeing an enhancement to that hillside. And minimal impact, but front doors for those homes will be facing the street, addressing the community, and, and being a part of the neighborhood. We don't anticipate vehicular gates, et cetera. It's open to the neighborhood. Moving on to the next slide. Um, as was previously provided, we are looking at a before and after at the corner of Eastern and Lombardi. Lombardi <coughs> here, Eastern along here. You can see we've evolved the architecture to a softer color scheme. We've also looked at, and you can see in the background, the homes of the existing hillsides and took those into to consideration as we were looking for a compatible um, fit, uh, something that fits the context of the neighborhood. Moving on to the next slide, this is an enlargement. Again, you can see some of the homes in the background. These are the four homes that are on the Lombardi frontage, and then you can see a few uh, that would be accessed from the opposite side. Again, part of the hillside slope will wrap from Eastern over to Lombardi and in between those two homes. So lots of landscaping between the two and in front of. So as you, if you look at this street scene here, we actually have about 40 feet or so between 
the property line to our building, so we have layers of landscaping both at the eastern frontage and then back behind another layer in front of the homes themselves. You can start to get a sense for the, the scale of the homes, and again, the, the compatibility looking at two and three story um, architecture throughout. Um, the homes themselves have been designed to work with the natural topography of the grid, so they're not not like what you might see here, which are effectively a three-story solid wall. We're actually stepping, while this structure is considered three-story, the first story element is pushed way back. So you're really getting a two-story element to the street, a one-story porch. So we're modulating that and articulating that facade so you're getting a pedestrian feel. And you're, it feels like a traditional home. Uh, part of that is by design, part of it is really due to the topography. We don't have a lot of, a cho a lot of choice here. Um, the softer approach is to work retaining walls into the building's foundation so you can step back and mimic the topography. So you step back into the hill with the house itself. Moving on to the next. This shows you what it would look like within the community. So again, a wider street scene. You can see the driveways, the trees. We've used a technique so you can see through the trees, but in reality, those trees are gonna be um, fuller and um, not necessarily the, the ghosted effect that we're showing, so you can see the homes in the background. But nonetheless, lots of landscaping, entries on the, on the uh, primary uh, drive through the community, and you can see this is moving towards the top of the hill itself. And so, sidewalk? Yeah, the, so there's sidewalks provided on the side of the street. So there will be access for the pedestrian and vehicular access as well. Um, overall we have three plan types and of those three plan types we have two elevation styles and three to four color schemes so we're creating a variety of, of architecture both in plan type but also in form and color and material. And if you could go to the next I think we'll move on to this next portion mm -hmm. of the presentation. Yeah, so um, thank you very much, Al. As you can see, we, they've put a tremendous amount of thought. You have to start with the site plan, and then you work with the architecture. So the site plan that we modified gave sort of a new idea of what we wanted to do with the architecture. And um, sort of backing up to also to that, you see how it fits the hill and everything. But if we, if we don't rezone the property, and we just do what's called the by-right zoning, we think it would be an atrocious <laughs> plan compared to this, like a multi-family site that's just sort of a, a sore thumb sticking up on the hill rather than blending in like we do. And that's why we're asking for the very specific nature of the applications we're asking for, because they were thought through based on that goal of, of not being an intrusion into the neighborhood. Yes, sir. Okay. That street that's going in, that's going to be a private street, correct? Yeah, correct. Privately and owned. And so there'll be a homeowner's association. Yep. But are you going to convert that into a gated community no. or no? No. There's, there's actually a functional reason for that, by the way, which proves the point. There's no room. Like, you, you, there's no room to create a, you have to create a turnaround where people come in and wait for the gate. There's no room for that little turnaround. Like, you remember how you see that sort of rounded bubble? There's no room for that. So we, we're not interested in doing that. So to the outside person driving by, They'll think it's just the street, but it's owned by the HOA and maintained by the HOA. And so now, I want to introduce consensus. Um, one of the biggest things when you're developing property in, in our company, Leah and I, really, it's critically important for us, like I said, to be good neighbors. And outreach, speaking to people, stakeholders, neighbors, interested parties, anyone that wants to ask questions. Uh, we hired a, a company to help us do that because we're sort of better at developing property and uh, we, we, we want communities to flourish and we want human beings to flourish and that's the whole reason we're in business and that's why we do what we do because we think housing is needed. But with that I'll introduce Abraham Mercado of Consensus Inc. One, one clarification. Is, yes sir. Is this a small lot subdivision? Yes sir. My slide is very quick. I'll give my two second commercial here. Um, as uh, Rob mentioned, my name is Abraham Mikado. I'm actually from the area. I grew up You're uh, in Well, I live in West LA. spend a lot of time in El Serino. Matter of fact, my brother's ex girlfriend is from El Serino. So, a lot of my childhood was in El Serino rec centers. Um, 
I was part of the AYSO Region 60, which encompasses Alhambra, also Region, I'm not quite sure where it's been. So I know the community really well. I'm fluent in Spanish. I also speak Spanglish <laughs> for those folks. Um, but we're going to uh, putting together a website. Um, we're going to relaunch it. Um, we'll have a, an email address that's now launched there. We'll have a um, um, hotline where people can uh, reach out to us and ask questions and, and learn more about the project. So. Where did you say you live now? Uh, East Los Angeles. East, East LA. Yeah, so I'm, I'm your neighbor. <laughs> like near uh, County. Right across from Boyle Heights. Right. Thank you. In that area. But, yeah, and I know this community really well. I have family here. And, this is year when I was a kid, so I know about King Talk Town and all the big places. So you know El Serrano, but you don't know the Serrano. Correct. Yeah. Just use your name. Sure, absolutely. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, we're going to be talking to uh, the community, um, specifically the neighbors adjacent to the site and um, key stakeholders and community, uh, key organizations as well. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. With everything going on at City Hall, how much you, you guys, developers, give it to the councilman? <laughs> I'm serious. Can we see your list yeah. of don donations? <laughs> exactly. I second that. We, we have, uh, we, we, we make those of them now. Uh, if you're making any donations, it might be to some community groups, but that's not. That's right. We're going to worry, we're going to check. We're not, we're not interested. We don't know anything about the politics. So. <laughs> it's, it's not our, it's not our thing. We don't get into it. How did you manage your community outreach process? Because there was no announcements made through the land use committee. I've been following this project from way back when, when another developer was on it. I live blocks away from this development, and I've heard nothing. That's why we're here tonight. This, this okay, but you said that you've been you doing community outreach for, for quite some time. That was my time. question as well. And so I, I don't know street. why anyone who's here has heard, no I don't know if anyone else has heard about it. Okay. So okay, no, so just I so, can clarify. We'll go ahead. Oh wait, well, okay. So the uh, the land use committee was not there were there were there wasn't even able to hold quorum for about six months, seven months. So this is actually so this meeting is just it's, it's just a fielder. This is this is the community outreach. After the uh, after they take the input from the community here. They'll come back at a different, at, at another point, uh, with any modifications or any concern, or to uh, address any concerns that the community has. So this is that, that that's why we're having this meeting right now. This is the, uh, there may have been like outreach done with the previous developer, but since you, since the new developer, we're, we're starting the outreach process all over again. That's why, so that's what we're having here. So the, the same thing was, was said before in private. Previous meetings, out of, the okay. blue, out of the blue, the, yep. just the next day, somebody uh, by chance sees an email from someone here, and then they pass on the information. So, is I mean, there, that's is, it, a, is what, the concern wanting to be heard? Well, I mean, you can't just out of the blue send these meetings. These, uh, you know, out of the blue send an email. Hey, there's well, a meeting. You can't yeah, well, besides that, you can't get so far along in the process where you're like one step away from approval and you haven't gotten any feedback from the community. Oh, well, that's why we're here. And, and just to clarify, this isn't the only meeting. So like, it's okay. not, this isn't the end of the outreach, it's the beginning. But when I said there's been a kind of outreach done, a lot of it. Um, well, you said that, but you're not saying how that how that happened and who you and what routes you went through to access the community well um, so we came into the project in the fall um, and the prior developer gave us a ton of notes letters um, there's a public record of the city and we've gone through and pulled all those files and looked at as much commentary as we can but tonight and, and about a month ago I went to the LA 32 council meeting and I said we'd like the opportunity to speak to land use and that's why we're here tonight. So but they were happy to maybe talk about the next series of meetings or whatever. Right. So let me just clarify. Um, Tier Water was a previous right developer. This is just a new developer coming in with the project. So that's why they, they haven't had any meetings with LA 32 because first of all there was no land use for such a long time uh, for various reasons. So um, we are David and I have been talking about Get this going because we know there's, there's there's urgent stuff that needs to be taken care of and we need to be informed. 
So uh, that's what tonight we're not going to do any any um, any kind of action toward these projects. It's just to present mm -hmm. and inform, take notes. I'm filming it for YouTube in case people that have to make it. I'll, I'll put it out on the website. So um, you know, it's just it's just to present the projects that are coming up. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned a LA City report. Is that the initial study for the project? Or? You mentioned that there was a LA City yeah. well, well, report. Well, I mentioned, I mentioned specifically it was that there is a existing proposed um, MND report, which is a response for the your process. process. Sorry. For this project. Yes, sir. Where do we find that? Where can we get that copy of that? Um, these probably from the city. They okay. it's their report. Uh, ask when you're city, in the city planning. I had, for example, it. Dr. Williams, I, I know, like, for example, you asked 108 questions of that of their initial secret question, and they, just for everybody's edification, just to show you the exhaustive level they've gone through it, they answered every question you proposed, and before they went and issued their proposed MND, they've done that sort of process already extensively and exhaustively. All we're doing tonight is talking about how we see the project modifying, but you know, it's not deciding tonight. We're going to go through a process of discussion. And I showed you on a slide the stuff on the right. When I started out the conversation, I'd say, if I missed anything on that list, let me know because I want to hear about it. Mm -hmm. And if it's helpful, I'll be more than happy to add the MNT link on the website. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Yeah, that way you can go to, you know, this, that, El Sereno versus LA City, uh, ZB345, so whatever that, that uh, code is. We'll have that up for the, I'll be much set that up. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yes, sir. So, one of the community benefits is supposed to be half a million dollars in property tax. Roughly. So, I'm just on the back of an envelope here. So Me too. 40, <laughs> 42 <laughs> units, so the property taxes are around 1%, so that means these are gonna be about a million dollars a unit. I, you know, I, I can't remember the exact number, but I went to a tax parcels of houses around there, yeah. and I took the existing property taxes, which are about 50 grand, and I added it up close to 600 grand, what the new taxes would be, so I conservatively said at least about 500 in new property taxes. But. It's, it's, I mean, it, it depends like, on the how so, but you know a, how much you want to sell these for, right? Because you're in the business of making houses and selling them. Yeah, so, so, like, yeah. we, we what are you going to sell them for? We're yeah. approximating because we don't know what the assessment is. Yeah, but you know you're going to have half a million dollars in tax revenue, so you know when you're gonna, what the assessed value is going to be when you sell them. $500 right? a square foot. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, as far as the property tax, it's not a really a, benefit, a direct benefit to the community in the sense that it goes into the general plan, okay? Sure. But as far as uh, beautifying that corner with all those trees, I think it's great. As far as what you said, as far as park fees and school fees and stuff that you're paying, you, you said that you talked uh, to the councilman or someone in the city where the money that you're paying as far as for the park fees, they would go directly and benefit one of the parks in the area. We don't control the money. No, I understand that. It's called a Quimby fee. Right. So Quimby what, fee. what happens is we've we've asked the question and we don't really have a great answer yet. We don't know. What we've said, is there a way to make sure we direct that money as locally as possible? That would be nice. We're trying. So that's the answer. Uh, just okay. Hold on. So just for that, so uh, we do have a sports and recs uh, committee. So that uh, I've, uh, I've given them their info, so that way, and then um, our with our with our CD14 rep Julio. Uh, so between them, and the, uh, the sports and rec committee, and Julio, they're going to see what they can do to make sure the money stays within within the LA32 boundaries. Right, that so, would be yeah. more benefit yeah. to the community because the tax yeah. actually yeah. goes to the general fund. Well, no, no. So the Quimby fund, as far as I know, which is like layman's terms, it goes it goes to the Department of Parks and Recs, and then it gets distributed from the city. So it stays in the Department of Parks and Recs. Oh, okay, so you can. No, I, I mean that money. You can say whatever you want to say. You know, I've been speaking to who. This is about money and reinvesting in the environment to clean, at least to clean. This is basic stuff. Five years, I've been communicating with Julio mm -hmm. to clean the whole corridor, Alhambra, Valley. Five years. Mm -hmm. They've only come twice. And that's it. Quimby funds cannot be used yeah. for operations so, and maintenance. It can purchases. only be used for purchase and new equipment. So, so the city, I mean, it's... Usually it's within two miles of the site. 
Well, we don't know. You know, we haven't decided nothing yet. But yeah, no, what we late. can do, well, what we can do, is also write a clause in in our whatever condition we do, depending on how we vote, okay. that we can make sure that this money stays within the community, towards the parks in the community. And that's just, I mean, recommendations right. only because so, the city of Ian has the last word. So. I just wanted to know. So there will be more people, obviously, living out here. Where I live, there are four cars right now on my street. Of the owners live down the street. Four cars on my street. Right. I cannot use my street because those people decided to use my street. Parking what? Side. Yeah. What? You know? Uh, how are you going to tell us that this money is going to be used to take care of the problems that are existing that haven't been addressed in five years? Yeah, we can. No, okay. So the. The Quimby funds that 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 that, that that's for Parks and Rec, so we can't. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, we can't, we can't use that to like solve. Yeah. No. So, but okay. But, but also, uh, if you live near the park, mm -hmm. you will hear uh, the noise disturbance is unbelievable. Okay, you would think on weekend weekends and weekend nights, you would think you're at a rock concert. It is so loud because of the acoustics, because of the, the way, the, land, the topography. But of course, if you don't live here, you don't know anything. You just see, oh, property, we can develop. Hey, this is good. Mm -hmm. You have to live in the area to understand how, how deep this problem goes. Mm -hmm. Did you have any questions, sir? Uh, not really a question in one sense. Uh, what she's talking about, you know, People from the next block or two blocks over parking in front and you don't have parking in front. I mean, I understand because I can see the layout, okay? It's a private road, double garage, although everybody has more than two cars, okay? One in the driveway and apparently you say there's going to be a curb and sidewalks so they will be able to park their guests up there, correct? So the only ones that it will really kind of impact I think the community mm -hmm. is going to be the four units mm -hmm. that are facing the street, okay? But you still have, are providing enough space for three cars. Actually, almost. So almost four, right? A because four. a double garage will have enough space for two in the front. So you're right about four, but it's not those four. Those four will all have a driveway and two-car garage and two cars on the apron. So each house basically has four cars, except for four of the houses at the top of the layout, at the top because it's just the hammerhead shape of the layout. So but the ones at the bottom, the four that they all have four. Only four states, right? Side right. Oh, actually, stay there. So, so no, see, this shows it here at the end of the, the, the hammerhead. Right. Those houses at the end, those four, don't have four. No, no, I understand that, but the, I think the main concern when it's going to be impacting the community, you know, the residents from their parking in the community, the immediate community, is going to be the four units that are down below. Well, on Eastern, Lombardi. Lombardi, 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 Eastern, yes. But all, all, all of those have two-car garages and, and two-car aprons. So okay. they each have four spots. Now, on Eastern, the whole front of the uh, the project, is that going to be no parking any time? Well, we don't park on the street. Could you go back to that, that slide? Because I think that's one of the concerns also. So the, let me just show you this if you don't know, for people that can see this. There's one driveway here where my finger is. You can see it goes in and across the front of these. So what the city does with respect to allowing parking there, I don't know. We would not have any way of knowing. How That's we the, want the to park one that uh, there's four units facing the street. But what about that whole side? What about the, doesn't the eastern side? The eastern the side. Facing the park. See, because two, there's two, 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 two houses. Yeah, that one. Yeah, the parking's the inside. But it's not on the. It's not on eastern. Go back. We're talking about. No, no, these two homes. Homes. Yeah. yeah. So they have drivers. Part it. Yeah. What I was talking about is mainly if somehow or another in the development of the project with the councilman and the city, that whole section is on Eastern Avenue, facing Eastern, yeah. is no parking any time because, or say during business hours, you know, the school buses, the traffic that gets, you know, from say Valley to Huntington, Huntington to Valley. I mean, it's not such a, it's not a large street, right. you know, it's not that wide. I mean, so you would you would uh, eliminate all these cars having more of an impact down below. Okay. So just to make sure, 
and Rick's saying Eastern will not be rezoned or made a one way from one way street to make parking on that side. We're, we're not changing anything. Okay. Mr. Right. Mr. Manny Hernandez. Right. Right. right, but if you guys can get the city to go, I think I think that's best coming from you because they right. have no interest in our opinion about right. right. That's how it works. Okay, I, I love your project, your concept, Thanks. everything, but you guys are not thinking in reality. I the agree. homeowners that are going to buy those, that are going to buy those, are going to have kids. And guess what? They're going to have cars. They're not going to have enough parking. Yeah. You, you, you got to think about, it's like, I'll give you a good example. The city of Summer, Summerland in Nevada, where my daughter lives at, they thought of that idea ahead of time. So they're giving more parking spaces in the front of their homes for the same thing. Kids don't want to leave home because they can't afford to buy their own place or rent their own place. So what do they do? They live with mom and pop. They have their own car. Where are they going to park it at? If you go to the west side, they have the same problem in the west side. There's no parking on the west side. There's no parking anywhere in this city. Mm -hmm. But the majority of them will have enough for six spaces, correct? Sir, you had a question? No. 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 Four. 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 So there's no street parking. Up on top, though. gentlemen and gentlemen, the back. Anywhere. I have a question about the access to the upper upper lot. No. Um, Easter is basically a miniature freeway around rush hour. Yes. And access in, in southbound will be making a left turn into there. Uh, yes. <laughs> when? Yeah, will there be a center median or something? No. Or a no. Sure. no. We're not changing this, the the nature of Eastern in any way. Whatever is there. Was there a proposal for a signal or a stop sign there? No, Can't. there was a study Can't. done, a traffic Can't. study, and it didn't propose any of those kinds of changes. But uh, after experience, I can tell you they would probably regard that as signals too close together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. but what we did do is I hopefully demonstrated that we did move the intersection further north as far as we could to pull it away from the corner up a little where we come around the corner. So, so I got David. Oh, sorry. Oh, no, I was just showing you. Oh, yeah, so actually we created this little thing. I think I showed it earlier. <coughs> an idea roughly, not to scale, but we moved further north. And there's the, there's the turn lane. I mean, it's there, so we're not, we're not altering any of the striping. And by the way, as to parking, as far as I know, you're not allowed to park there now, so I don't think... No, no, no parking. No, yeah, no, I think park their there. concern is that like it will go from no parking to parking, like, and then there'll be a bunch of... Is that no, what what's going to happen is, I'm sorry, there's parents that come to school to bring pick up the kids, they, there's about three or four parking there. Mm -hmm. So maybe with the development, they might turn it all red. I don't know. I but right now, at least three cars here. could park there, parents yeah. wait there for their kids. They wait all the way up the block. And that's an exceptionally deceiving picture. I'm so sorry. That just looks like it's a mile long. Yes, I have several questions about Fire away. trying to be very quick. What but we're I do want for? to point out, since we're on this photo, uh, just to clarify, because I think in everyone's minds, we think of the entrance as being the obvious entrance that we see there right now with the gates on it, and that is not the entrance that's being proposed. The entrance that was originally proposed is down at the property line. That's and right. now what they're showing is just a few hundred feet toward the gate from that mm -hmm. property line, but it's still not that main gated entrance that we see whenever we drive by there. It's because probably a little off from there, a little bit so far. Here, I'll point that out. So I, I wonder, um, because you're a new organization, does that mean that you are now the property owners, or are you working for the property owners? No, we have a contract to buy the property from the property owner. And was that, is that Clearwater, or is that? Um, it's a, well, a Clearwater company, they usually use LLCs or whatever, but yeah, yeah, we have a contract okay. to buy so they had purchased it and now they're... Clearwater, where their subsidiary owns it, oh, right. Well, not all right, but you know, they, they own title to it, and we and have a contract about it. Is your ownership pending approval of these plans? Uh, no. So you're just in escrow with that? Yeah, because we're allowed to develop it regardless. Yeah, okay. What, uh, you probably heard the phrase, by right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Next mm -hmm. one, you have another one? Well, yeah, so I understand uh, that because we're dealing with a small lot development that you, we have to rezone because it's um, R5, is the zoning for small lot development. And right. I know that um, in the rezoning process, the, the qualifying conditions or the Q conditions, which we know as the Hillside Ordinance, um, gets cleared. And so I'm, I'm really eager to look at your documentation to understand what true variances you're looking for and whether or not the Hillside Ordinance will 
then be reestablished after the, the R5 designation. Um, I'm concerned about that because the hillside ordinance is what um, dictates how much excavation you can do on the site. And so I'm really interested in hearing about your excavation numbers, which you haven't really discussed with us. Um, I know that the previous plan had proposed excavating somewhere like 83,000 cubic yards and trucking away 78,000. And so I don't know what this layout has in store for us, but I'd really like to see a cross section. I can tell you that we, we can provide that as time goes on, and it's probably not too far off from that. Okay. It's so probably somewhere yeah. below. So can you bring that in maybe the next time you come sure. to present? Make sure that that your questions or concerns are addressed and just Absolutely. numbers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. well, so right now, we, it may be approximate there. because we don't get into fine engineering sure, later. Sure, I understand but, that. But, but I mean, the approximate, approximate numbers are helpful. So yeah. under the hillside ordinance, you can excavate a thousand cubic yards of soil from the lot, and this ends up being three lots, so you could excavate three thousand cubic yards. But your proposal, you're saying, is near to the last proposal, which was actually eighty-three thousand cubic yards. Yeah. So it's a significant amount different from what is allowed in the hillside area. Um, we don't, we don't want to move dirt because it's expensive to move dirt. Yeah. <laughs> but I can tell you, as someone who's been in the business for 33 years, it's not an un uncommon number right. for a, lot, a site this size. Sure. And, and I've handled it effectively numerous times in terms yeah. of safety, emissions, noise, dirt. I think the bigger concern so, is just um, but it's a great do we question. want to haul away our hill? Or, or well, someone would someone would have to buy it from us and do that with it if they want to. That's yeah. not how we're. I understand that you're in the you're in the business of developing. Absolutely. So I'm not proposing that to you. I'm, I'm, I'm putting that out there for our community to consider. True statement. Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking of a number of um, in, regarding excavation numbers. I'm curious about whether on Lombardi. Um, you're still encroaching in the public right-of-way to put the four homes there on Lombardi, is that right? I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. The previous project did encroach in the public right-of-way to, to put those homes there, so I suspect yours does too. Okay. So what do you mean by encroaching the right in the public so right-of-way? Um, right, of right now there's there's a sidewalk, and then there's a right-of-way outside of that sidewalk. Oh, you're, so you're talking about that little perpendicular, that little like... No, I'm not talking about the, the corner. Space? I'm just talking about the right-of-way mm -hmm. that is mm -hmm. off of the street, no, street that is for public use, okay. as opposed to private. Well, for clarity, you can't always... The, 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 Edges of the road don't always match the right of way, so sure. it might not be visible to the naked eye what the right of way is. But, but, but you do do you do put driveways across yes. that yeah. sidewalk. I don't believe the intent is ever changing the right of way there. I think there is a dedication along yeah. Eastern three foot strip. It's a variable because of the nature of the site. Um, but yeah, we'll look at it with our civil engineer and confirm that and get back to it. It's just it's useful information for the community. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, wanted to, to address your comment about the full site ordinance. There's lots of technical zoning code that we can yeah. talk if you care. Care to, but what I, what I can't say is a north hillside ordinance is the more restrictive of the two documents, and, and that's, that's what we, we designed are. to. So there's a level of consideration whether it's floor area, stepping the house into the hillside, and keeping a plumb line for your building heights. So there's a lot of that that's built into the design of the project. That's helpful, and I can see that in the homes that are on uh, Lombardi. Mm -hmm. I am curious about. Um, the homes on the top. I know that you know this particular top of the hill isn't the highest point, so I know you're allowed to build up there. Um, this is a very small image; it's impossible for us to really get the nature of, of that. But Sorry I'm about that. really interested in understanding what that looks like, not only from the front, but from the full amphitheater of homes behind. Um, sure. So all of these homes that you show are in the interest of protecting the street view, are lined up on the back of the lot. Um, and the back of the lot um, is a very steep area. And right below those homes, on both Mallory and on Klamath, are other homes. And those homes, back, their property lines back right up to these homes. And I, see, I think I see that these homes have a relatively short backyard. And you've talked about them being um, two and three stories. So real, real question is, is anyone here from Klamath or Mallory? Do you live on Klamath or Mallory? So 
and they're going to be hammered by construction like you would not believe. And their, the views from at least 20 houses there will be directly into the backyards of the adjacent landowners because they're elevated. Which is what I'm talking about. I'd like to see um, a section through there yeah. so we can understand. Yes. I, I do have neighbors on Mallory, and I'm, I'm interested in bringing them in. I don't know if you've reached out to them or not, um, but I, I think they've had concerns in the past about to the extent of this building right up to that property line, how it hovers up behind them. And I have safety concerns and also just aesthetic concerns about that. Thank you. Did you have any other points? Oh, it was just about emergency vehicle clearance. I know the last project couldn't, couldn't get it. And I'm wondering about, is this, does this abide by the emergency vehicle's needs to get in and out? It's what the hammerhead at the end of the cul-de-sac does. Instead of a cul-de-sac, you're allowed to do it. Instead of this shape, you can do that shape. shape. Yeah. And then it's also what's called double water line. Okay. A little uh, a looped water line so that if one line breaks, the other line's intact. So there's always uh, fire Flow. hydrants up yeah. there. Always flows up That's there. a good question. And I did I hear people talking about parking. You were a little fuzzy math with your numbers there, where you said if you've got 41 homes, if you've reduced it by one. 42 homes. Two. Oh, 42. Two. Really reduced it, so 42. So 42 homes. Um, you said you had 68 parking sites overall. So I assume <coughs> two of those are in everybody's garage. Is that right? No. Okay. So I, I meant to highlight the driveway spaces. Okay. I'll pull out the map so I don't misspeak. That was not my intent. 42 homes, there will be 84 garage spaces. Okay. Each home having two of those garages. That's just the start. That really didn't change as how the project was always designed. Yeah. Previously, the guest parking was 12 to 14 parking lot spaces that were distributed throughout. Now with the driveways, we have 68 spaces in the driveways. Okay. So that's 54 more cars on the site within the property than what was previously proposed. So your guest parking is in people's individual driveway pads? Correct. Yeah, there's, okay. no, there's no separate allocated guest parking anywhere. Okay. But like first come, first serve, you would see that okay. in the parking. So if a person has a party and they own two cars that are parked in their garage, and then their first two guests get there and park in their driveway. Same thing that happens all throughout the community. Then right? everyone else parks and everyone else's it's driveway. The, it's or? the normal condition we all live with. It's, it's, that's, you know, parties will happen. It's no different than what's happening on Climate, for example. But what I, I mean, I, I just don't see where, if you do have a party, there, I don't see overflow parking. If the guest parking is in everyone's driveway, and there's no parking down below on Lombardi, I mean on Eastern, so, so there really isn't guest parking, is that? For, no, there's for no, more there's than no, two guests. There's no, <laughs> it's all in the, the definitions, right? There's no guest parking here. Okay. okay. And by that, I mean, you can park in your garage or yeah. on your apron. Or on your pad. Okay. And if you make a deal with your neighbor and you got a party, and there's a couple more you can borrow for that night. That's the way it's going to be. Yes, sir. Living on a hillside, we only can park on one side, all right? Is if someone has a party, what they do is <laughs> they park below and they get shuttled up. Okay. Okay. Instead of, you know, creating a major problem because everyone's going to call the cops. You know, because they're a, a parking enforcement, whatever. Your project is directly across from the recreational center, which has a big public parking. Which means, because I don't think you can impose the, that, you know, if you're going to build something, you're going to have to provide for guest parking. You know, because they, you're going to say you can't have a party. And if you do, you're going to have to have space. You know, but that's bull. Because you know what? In this case, the park is directly across the street. All they have to do is shuttle them from there across, or they can walk up. You know, but on a hillside, up up above, I mean, I've seen people get shuttled up. Okay, and that's not a problem. You cannot impose that on a builder because if you had a lot and you were going to build a home, and we said, oh well, if you have a party, you have to have all this parking space for all your guests. That's not right. I, I it kind of sounded like it. Oh, I see. Now, I'm curious about how this functions, and, and I would like everyone else to be thinking about how it functions, and that's why I asked the questions. But it sounds, sounds to me like it's almost like a bit, a bit of a, a macro question for the city in general, how they're you know, operating mm -hmm. in that sense. Like in one sense, as a developer, you get this messaging that no cars. <laughs> and then the next project is you don't have enough cars. 
So we just try to do, we're doing a single family housing project here. The characteristic of that is it's really actually a pretty big number to provide four spaces compared to most projects. So yeah. we're, we're pretty comfortable with that. We think that that's what the market demands. Now, does the HOA usually, and probably in this case, will have rules that says, you know, Fred, you can't park in front of Sally's house or you know, whatever. Oh, wow. Everyone tends to just honor those, depends on the strength of the HOA. But right. I'm sure that that will be also something addressed in the HOA documents one day down the road. But That's a lot better than building the whole hilltop for a f for Section a 8 low-income housing yes. with these big projects. And you know what kind of what, what problems it brings into your neighborhood? Well, I hear you. I hear you talking. It's like one or the other. But I'm not sure it's one or the other. Okay. I mean, I think we, we have options and we can consider that. But it, it, like it's it. not a bad problem. So, so it sounds like you guys can have a conversation afterwards. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, I'm done with my Okay, we have time for one more question. Uh, so. I just had a couple of oh. comments. Um, I think that is, the plan is very attractive. I like how Thank you've you. uh, integrated so many trees on the hillside so you get the effect of it still being an open space. We call it an urban forest. Um, but, I, but I do think that this project um, is sort of based on an older model. It doesn't um, increase or, or um, it doesn't increase the walkability of the neighborhood. It just is going to be a car culture. And um, if you're going to be locked into an HOA, there's no amenities for your customer base. Like you have that whole beautiful hillside. That could be an exercise for us with titles or something. That you, could be you know, it's, it's, the these are great comments. That there's all these opposing forces we try to deal with, that mm -hmm. yin and yang of do this and do that. We just try to find a good balance. And, and, and honestly, every comment I've heard here today sounds rational, sounds nice, informative. Yeah, I mean, they're all things that weigh into the mix. So we've come up with this, what I think is actually a really good plan. And, I would uh, like but we want to hear more about it, and there's more coming, and, and maybe. Uh, I would like to see this site preserved for additional parkland, even though the park needs assessment said that this community is not a park park community. They were including in the square footage of the park needs assessment all of the open space. Well, I can't take a toddler or my grandmother to an open space park in these steep hills. We need more community neighborhood parks. And this is a prime opportunity for us to add additional acreage to El Serena Park. Well, we're providing a substantial check in the form of Quimby fees to contribute to that. Very but well. that's for our deferred maintenance for upgrades of parks. That, helps, that doesn't that add extra well. square footage to the, the base that needs space to recreate. Well, um, if that, any other questions, or is that David? Or is he, you have more. You have more. Yeah, can I just add a minute? Just to echo what Rob said, we heard a lot of informative. Um, questions and, and great questions. So I want to capture all of that. I'm going to pass around a sheet if you please give me your contact information. We can um, grab that. And pass it around. We can keep you informed of the project and when we forward, you'll get an email from the project team. Um, when we launch our website, as we on that uh, email blast. Keep you on informed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, thanks you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Know this is a little bit better. Uh, Those Somebody volunteered that. Yeah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, Rob, Abraham, thank, 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 thank you very much, you guys. Uh, we'll be in contact if you, if you guys want to present uh, a follow-up presentation, and then we'll take yeah. we'll, we'll it from there. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Uh, Don't thank hesitate you. to reach us. David, we're just going to wait for the email list. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, okay. yeah. before it. Yeah. Uh, Eduardo, you can help. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's good. Do you want me to put the back of the board? Good. 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 Good.
Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, if I can have your attention for a quick second. When everyone, the last person signed the sheet that's going around, if you could just pass that to me, um, I'll collect it. Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you, guys. property 
I have talked to planning at uh, LA City Planning. I have talked to the um, Council District Office. They're uh, planning aid, and now I'm coming to you to get additional input on it. At the moment, right now, the, the proposal, as mentioned, is to convert from A1 agricultural and R1, which is a single family residential, to RE9000, which is uh, real estate 9000, which is a bigger lot than the R1. The property, um, as you can see, is going to have its challenges. Um, the proposal wouldn't be to develop the, the entire thing. Um, if you see, I think one angle in particular, this one here, um, there are some areas there that present challenges beyond even with the technology and the everything that we have at our disposal today. Um, you wouldn't want to take, up, not take on that challenge because you'd have to sell that particular home for so much money just to come up to make up the cost to, to build it. The proposal um, would be to develop the more flatter part of the property, the more accessible part, um, and leave the other space as open, uh, green, what have you. Right now it's not heavily planted, um, pretty much as you see it there. The, we would, in order to process it similar to the, pro the product you just heard would be a small lot uh, subdivision. The lots wouldn't necessarily get as small as you can get with the small lot. The small lot ordinance allows you to go down to a 600 foot square foot lot, which would be way too small. Uh, but it allows you then to be able to subdivide the property in a manner which you can then focus the development on a part of it without utilizing the entire site uh, for development. Um, right now, as I mentioned, um, we are in the very, very preliminary stages of looking at the feasibility of this. So a lot of the items that would come forward eventually down the road, like the environmental, like the 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 uh, soil reports, those would be in in process as soon as we have an idea that okay we can do a zone change, um, it's feasible. Then obviously we would then get moving on those types of items. For tonight. I think more than anything is those, you know, those who are here is to hear, kind of get your input, get your feedback, anything that would help in that decision making. Because as it is, it can be developed. Um, even A1 <coughs> allows single family residential. It's just at a, at a much lower density. But it also allows, you know, farming and agricultural uses as well. Um, so there are, even if you don't, support any kind of zone change, it can still be developed. And as mentioned before, it could be developed by right um, under the one, the current one, and then the R, the piece that's R1 is just a small little sliver right here, tiny little sliver that for some reason got left over. I don't know what happened there. There is a piece of property right here that is actually owned by somebody else. And I know from my talks with the property owner, they've talked to them about selling or about incorporating it. That at this point hasn't gone anywhere. So, you know, I'm not here to propose anything that would be developed along here. That's separate private property. Um, Can you and point on that picture, the, the space that you're talking about? Yeah. And I, actually, I can actually play. The lot goes like this. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, where that big man is. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 The challenging stuff. Well, that's <laughs> no. no. <laughs> And left the okay. caps off. So the, big rec, the whole rectangle. Right, it's, a, it's essentially a rectangle. So where would that piece that could not be developed, where is that in the other picture she's asking, like in the one next to where it's hard? So right there. here, it, the part that's that's private, separately yeah. owned, yeah. it's right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. And sense? right here, it's, it. yes. okay. it's this one here, mm -hmm. yep. and then there. Yep. Okay, thank you. So that's, for some reason though, oh, yes. 
So wait, what streets are those where like where the privately owned property is? This is Klamath. This is um Richie uh, Lou. Richie Lou. Dittman. 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 Dittman we would obviously there's nowhere else to come in for other than either one of these two streets here the existing streets um right now there is an existing easement here that's 20 feet wide for a future street i guess they realized that that lot this lot would get landlocked if they didn't do something over there at some point so there is a dedication of 20 feet for a private street if this guy ever decided to do something on his own or with that piece of property. This one is a lot steeper. Mm -hmm. Here it has its challenges with this little bite here. So that's kind of why this this whole area here would be kind of the area that we wouldn't want to necessarily want to touch or, or get into because of this and because of how steep it is just from the profile. So, uh, so your property, so uh, it, it, it abuts at, uh, Asphalt Hills Park, correct? Right. So and then all of this also... right here behind, the, basically this green line. Yeah. Behind it, is, um, from my understanding, Ascot Park. Okay. So is it possible? So is is, is it your property that's uh, kind of sort of preventing combining El Sereno and Ascot Hills Park? Because I know there's, I, uh, so if you look on Google Maps, no, like you know, it looks like, or, no, it's it would, it would be further, yeah, further to the south. north, north, okay. Okay. to the right, okay. and to the right. Yeah, so so I would, I would. <laughs> yeah, no, no, okay, right. okay. Well, basically, okay. So basically, like when you, okay, so we, 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 we let Richie live. So go to Richie live. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yes, go, go, a little first. Yeah, right there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah if, if you go further south, El Sereno yeah, yeah. Park would be here. Yeah, and here's Ascot. So oh, can we talk about where the community second. center is? Yeah. Correct. Oh yeah. no, that's yeah, that's further down. Yeah, that's, further, yeah, yeah. that's further down south. Yeah. Yeah. If you were to come down here, you know, it's it's yeah. a block, maybe two blocks down, further down. Yeah. Uh, because I was because I was just thinking like for for future like just because like I, like man, what you were saying like you know we could use more acreage for parks. It's like combining those two parks. Yeah, that'd be like you know have some hiking trails up there. That'd be yeah, so if, if your property was in that boundary. Maybe we could work something out, but you're, it's not your, not your property, so it's not right. Not not your issue, right? Um, you know, I, I don't know if the, I know it's not your decision to make, but obviously you're not the one that's tell the city to spend the money, buy the property, and build a park. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, no, but, but no, but the quimby fees you you, you uh, that development with with that you pay for could be used for that, or right. could be. Well, it, lobby to use for that. Right. So, yeah. if, if there's no development, though, and it turns into a park, then there's no yeah, fee, yeah. and, and right. it doesn't come from somewhere else. Yeah. Right. So, you know, I, at this point, just really want to hear from, from those of you that live here, just to get some input back and then take it back to the property and let them know what, what the community thinks. Um, you think you had it? Well, I'm curious, are you intending to develop all the way up to the ridge line of that property? Is that what you're saying? The fence line is at the ridge the, line. Yeah, this would be the ridge line right here. Yeah. Um, it depends on how, right now, it, it looks like that's the flattest part here, but not necessarily the ridge line here. Uh -huh. Right, so if you were at So the more down line. over here, where it, it's not, not as a, a pronounced ridge here yeah. as it is Oh, yeah. sure. So you're talking about nine acres at the end of Klamath. So um, you would develop from the end of Klamath up to the ridge line. Right. And what would be the height of those homes up to, at the ridge line? Are they single story, two story? The, the highest it would be two story. Um, yeah. Three story for single family. Um, even in a hillside is tough. Um, that's a lot of stairs to start climbing. The only place, and, and I'll talk about that next, is when you have a three-story is if you're doing one that is like a, a level down and a level up, because mm -hmm. you have a hillside that you're going, you, 
you, all right, you're going split level. Yeah. They'll consider it three story, but you know, from from one point you're in the house, it doesn't feel like a three story house. Um, here, um, you know, we would not want to, you know, obviously put three story buildings on top of the hill and have them, you know, sticking out of there like sore thumbs. But um, only in here, really, it just makes the least sense because of how difficult it would be. So you're, you said you could potentially develop that entire swath that we see. I, I was thinking of, you know, what is the area? And you pointed the area to the left would be later developed in the area. No, no, and I'm saying this, this, we would try to avoid here where it's, a, where it's the steepest. Steep, and yeah. then it, it also has an indentation. Yeah. And I think I heard it's someone like mention a landslide. landslide. Right, it something, yeah. or landslides. something might have happened there where, where the geology might not Supply. permit. Yeah, yeah. so this part here is less desirable than this part here where it's flatter <coughs> and actually more accessible because the streets both come in there. So I would just like to make a comment to the committee. Um, this is the second project that we're seeing tonight, but not only the second project in El Serena, where we're looking at small lot development in our hillside areas. And small lot development was a development tool that was intended to infill, and, and that starts at places like strip malls or gas stations that are no longer being used. It starts in commercial areas or areas next to transit lines. Um, so when we're using small lot development to start to creep into the hillside area, I feel like that's dangerous. Is it 9,000 square feet? And I don't think that the city planners are watching that very closely. Um, so far, there's only been one hillside, a small lot development approved for a hillside area, and it was in Eagle Rock. Um, and that I think is a loophole that planners are beginning, you know, no offense to, but they're beginning to use because they have the potential to maximize um, small acreage. Um, and that's not a bad thing, but when we look at densifying our hillsides and building up into our visible hillsides in El Serino in an area that we're known for our hillsides and that we're right next to downtown, but we get this, you know, people can come out here and get a break into the hills, I just think it's dangerous and I'm, I'm not opposed at all to smart development. I think infill is really great. I think small lots are very useful, but you don't start in your hillsides with that. You actually start in the commercial areas. So when I look at these types of developments, I have concerns. I also yeah. wonder about fire insurance. For those of us who have history in the area, you know how many times those hills have burned. Yeah. That was actually my next question. Was like, is this going to be? Is this going to like? Is there a fire risk for these for these houses? Because I have seen I have seen that hill burn. <laughs> Six just times. Just last summer. I like. Well, okay. Like, so I was like, so I'm 30 years old. I've seen things burn like six times in my yep. lifetime. So I mean, I could be off by one or two. Well, minutes. that's that's one of the things that that actually building there helps to address because when you have a vacant land, like a lot of these hillsides are, um, absentee mm -hmm. owners that don't live in the, on the property, then they're more susceptible to catching fire. They're more susceptible to overgrowth. Mm -hmm. um, as opposed to when you have families living there, um, these homes will all be uh, sprinklered. They will be mandated by the city to be sprinklered. So, and then whatever... Are sprinklers or internal? internal. Most of them are internal. Internal. Yeah. But there's it doesn't do anything for the grass fire. And I say, from the recent fires, <coughs> one of the aspects will be within the next year, probably external sprinkler systems. Our department has required it in a couple right. of places. Well, the, the intent would be to comply with whatever rule, whatever rule is out at yeah. that time to be to comply with the industry for it. Like, uh, get to well, also. Not 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 skin, but also be used, right? Like you could have like high like like cacti and like like what the Getty has. You know, they have like high high water content flats. Yeah. It's so. called fuel mod modification. And, and and also the fact that there would be less dry shrubs and, and overgrowth to, to catch on fire to begin with. The other thing on your side, but well, that's what I was getting at though is that, that as a part of it now there will be an HOA that will have the funds to be able to then maintain it and to whatever is the case that, that the fire department requires to yeah. minimize fire there, now there will be uh, an actual organization, a group with funds to address the fire, the potential. If you can give us your contact numbers, uh, there used to be an oil well here, 
at the end. And I say I have uh, several aerial photographs that show some of the bedding in there, which would be useful for the I'll, 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 so I'll pass it over. Make sure you. Yeah. Well, I live where your next project is, okay? The way we look at it is we build up homes, okay? Right now, the hillside is not we have all right? Each individual owner of his home has to comply with the city every year. So there would be weed abatement. And, and you would hold the owners that are living on the property, if it's, they're not rentals, accountable to it. And you know the city will cite you. If you don't do it, the city will go out there, take a crew, and charge you through the rear. Okay? So there is a certain amount of weed abatement. And I have seen, um, as I've helped my own clients um, purchase properties, I have seen records where when you don't pay your weed abatement, it, they, they get assessed to your house and they keep going over and over and over. And I've seen properties with, uh, eventually what they do is the fire department goes out or they hire some, a private company to go out and, and just abate the weeds themselves, but they keep, paying, you keep, they keep charging you. Actually, the city does. The city, yeah. Yeah. So, just going back to the entrance to that, so I so you mentioned that Richie Le Terrace would not be, or it's not feasible to go through Richie Le Terrace to access that area? No, right now, uh, Richie so Le Terrace dead ends here. Uh huh. It would be. And then the next, and so then there's Klamath. Klamath, right. So potentially, if there's for, just for the sake of circulation, there could be something that goes like that, or um, something that. You know, at this point, I, I don't. We haven't laid it out or anything, but there is that opportunity there to use it. And oh, with um, a long climate. Yeah, with either with more than likely, um, for circulation purposes, <coughs> it'll be for sure climate, um, and then maybe also Richie Lou. But at this point, like I said, it's really early in the process to know what the city might require us to do as well. The, uh, the 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 twenty foot abatement for a, a road already. That's that's where Klamath ends, right? That's right. Where, okay. okay. Right here. Right where it ends, it, it jogs over to the left. Okay. All right. Yes. So, forty-seven strikes me as a very specific number. Like if I were thinking, oh, I might build something on this hill, I'd say forty-five or fifty. Like where did the number forty-seven? It's just from the zoning. The zoning RE nine is 9,000 9, square feet per lot. So you just divide the, uh, the, the lot is 426,259.3 square feet divided by nine and it's it, 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 You carved out parts of it you're not gonna use, right? So. Right, so, so you look at it, what that number says is that if you take the entire site and you divide it by, by 9,000, you would get 40, 47. And it's actually 47 point something, but you round down. Um, and then you look at yeah, then, then then you look at it and say, can I physically put forty seven nine thousand square foot lots on the property and make it a feasible project? And I tried that and it was no, because you're putting roads, you know, you're having roads cutting across and it, it becomes a big mess. It basically becomes a small lot development, but with. 9, square with bigger square. lot, right, with bigger lots, not necessarily the smallest lots, but it becomes something where it's more feasible and not <laughs> utilizing the, the entire the entire site. So you're going to max out like how much you can build based on the acreage, but you're not going to use the whole acreage. Correct. You, you That's use correct. Small lots or right. If this was flat land, then <laughs> it would be the entire site, right? <laughs> One issue for especially for will be your all around. And I say you got a lot of excess cut material. Right. And, and it's going to come down Klamath onto Eastern. Right. And that's, um, and that's I, I was taking some notes while, while the other discussion was going on. And um, I'm actually really glad that, that they went first <laughs> for, for one. <laughs> um, so that they took the brunt of it. Um, and hearing, being able to take some notes myself. Um, and I know that that's going to be an important thing, and it, it, it's important for a lot of reasons. Obviously, hauling dirt out is expensive, and in really narrow, hilly streets, it's even 
even more difficult than anywhere else because of that same fact that if you're, depending on how small a truck you use, yeah. that increases. 10 cubes. <laughs> yeah. 10 cubes. Then uh, that increases the a lot. Of the last project, 83,000 cubic yards means 8,300 truck round trips. Right. Coming in empty, picking up, and taking out. Right. And, and, and hauling, hauling dirt, however far it's going, is not cheap. So it is in everybody's interest to minimize the amount of dirt that's, that's, that's going to be. Any other? Oh, thank you. Yeah. I live on Dittman Avenue. That's why I specifically wanted to come out here tonight. And I only found out about it because it was posted on Facebook. So the next time there are meetings, I really would like to have the community have other means of knowing that this is taking place because if something like that takes place over there, I really would like my neighbors to know what's going on and to come out because I would really want to preserve the hillside and um, and um, I'm also would be concerned if there is construction, the pressure of the hill, my backyard, I have a steep hill. And I would, and the rest of my neighbors, we would fall along that side. So I would be really concerned about the pressure and, you know. Um, landslide. And yeah, and there was a landslide, uh, well not a landslide, well water, uh, water leaked and caused some mud, a mudslide in the area that's not going to be built. And uh, just this week with all the heavy rain. Um, so I've been really concerned about Ascot Hill because I, I hear about the other development. I think it just takes away from the hill, um, you know, and to see more development in the rest around it just takes away from the hill. So just a little rusty because we've been out for so long out of our circulation as the land use committee. So usually we have a sign-in sheet in case you want to sign up for any further uh, applications from the land use committee. So David's doing that right now, just you know, just to, just to put your name in your email in case we get. Well, usually from now on, right, it should be once a month. We should be meeting here on the third the third, third Wednesday, right? Wednesday, yes. The third Wednesday of the month. <laughs> oh, yeah. Usually it's here. I know it's been a long day. So uh, look forward for next. Uh, next month, the third Thursday, a third Wednesday of the <laughs> month here, will be uh, you know another land use. It could be another project. We have a few projects lined up that are we just stacked up, stacked up as we're behind. So oh, thank you. we'll let you know as uh, soon as uh, you know we know anything. No, well, thank you and appreciate everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, yeah it, 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 if you, if you, okay, if you feel that the outreach wasn't enough, let me know. Since I'm the chair, so that's my job. Uh, Put, put down your name, put down your email, and then I'll, I'll compile an email list that they, like, I can just do an email blast, uh, like, you know, the week before, and say, hey, our next, a reminder, our next meeting is next week, so, you know, if you could come, great, if you can't, we'll see you at the next one. So, uh, yeah, like, like what I said, yeah, we've been, we've been on commission for a couple months, so we're trying to, well, a couple. Yeah, we're, yeah. Trying to, we're trying to, get, we're trying to get the rust off, the rust off, and get back up, back up running, so. Thank you for your patience. And if I could also add, um, my, my next step after this, and this one kind of, um, got a little bit ahead because I was going to be here to present another one, so I, I wanted to kind of come in and go both at the same time. Um, but similar to on Barrett Road, what I did is um, all the neighbors that are adjacent to that site, mm -hmm. I sent out a letter, like to Dr. Williams, who lives on adjacent to it as well. And I specifically outreached and asked, you know, what are your concerns? You know, this is at the point of the, uh, of the process where it's early enough to start getting input. Yeah. And so that I can address you know, whether it's fires, floods, all that other stuff, then we can start addressing that with time. Right, and just real quickly, it's like Dittman Avenue, that's a cul-de-sac, and already, like it's every owner, you know, has their parking spot on the street, you know, they got their garage, but it's, kind it, of. you know, so, you know, any more, you know, It's parking, a tough street, I've had to go down it just when I first in. came out here, I have yeah. a Suburban, and I couldn't get, I was like, how am I going to get out of this thing, it's Back tight, so yeah. So talk about, like, overflow people needing to park, and if there's more units up there, they're, yeah, so, I mean, out of curiosity, since you live on Dittman, how, how hard is it for, like, emergency personnel to get out there? Like fire trucks? Yeah, like fire trucks, ambulances? I've been there... 
I, there, ha I please, haven't, please, there hasn't been one up there yeah. in a while. Oh, uh, okay. Because they, they have to the back out. out. Uh, they were, yeah, okay. They they back. There, was back a, out. there was a previous project that we had that we, that we heard about a year ago uh, where it was it was basically, it's the, the Onyx Project, Dr. Tom Williams. So it's basically like, it's, it's a property and it's surrounded by a bunch of cul-de-sacs. So their, their, prop, their proposal was to combine those streets by building new streets. And that was, and one of the benefits was that it was going to eliminate the need for fire trucks to back out. They could just, you know, drive through and go around. Yeah. So that was uh, with, with Dittman and also like, I just know like a lot of the, a lot of our, with our hilltop homes when they were built like, you know, decades ago, the streets are very narrow, they're very windy, yeah. so when you have like a, a you know, an 18-wheeler fire truck going through there, it's, yeah. it's, 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 a, it's a very, it's very convenient to go through that, so, which is like, if we could, if they choose to develop it, at least, you know, like, we could, you know, get some benefits out of it, so it would be easier, circulate it easier for people to get in and out, um, so, but, um, uh, preliminary, so like if, if you do choose to develop it, are the homes going to be on the bottom portion of the property or the top or just all over? They would be more so on the, yeah, this side, on, this side, on north okay. is that way, right? So yeah. yeah. On, yep. on, focus more on the northern part okay. and not so much on the southern part. But she's asking to elevate to the top, like to the top of the well, it, well, it, it, it would depend, like yeah, it would depend on the oh. Where we yeah. can fit them, right? So and closer to Richie Lou Terrace, that, that right. from, from near to here, right? Okay. So, because yeah, no, I agree with you. Like yeah, like we are known for our hills, and I kind of you know like, I mean, people own private property, and it's their right as a private property owner to build on them if they choose to. But sure. uh, you know, if we could preserve some of the some of our hilltops, that you know, that'd be great. And I, I think that's an important point too, because one of the um, one of the things that I had talked to, I guess it was the broker um, early on, uh, some time ago, um, there was a lot of misconception that this was part of the city's park. Um, a lot of people see the park and th there's not a clear cut. I mean, obviously from here you can see there's some brush, but it looks for all intents and purposes a part of the park. Um, but to be clear, it's private property. It's not public property. I'm sure if there was an offer <laughs> to buy it and incorporate it, you know, they would entertain it probably, possibly. But it is private property. Um, it's just obviously a lot more difficult to develop. Uh, so any questions on this one? Um, I do still intend to send out letters to the neighbors and, and get, I guess, some more feedback. But I wanted to also, now that this process has begun again, to make it a public forum where everybody can hear and you know it becomes part of the record as well that you know these, these questions were asked and that we were able to respond you know to some satisfaction that uh, this is your concern and we addressed it. Ready for Barrett Road? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so project number two is going to be at 4101 Barrett Road. Uh, same thing it seeks uh, for a zone change uh, to go has he still changed from agricultural to residential, correct? No, no, no. This yeah. is, uh, I'll explain right now. It's RD6. It's going to stay RD6. Okay, all right. Yeah. So, but, but it will, it, it, and I'll explain why it's going to be, why it's called a zone change. Okay, all right. Uh, so, this, this, uh, this site is going to, they seek to allow for the development of 79 units. Uh, with 43 townhomes and 36 single family homes, and the site is 10.9 acres, with a, and it's bounded by a, water, by a water reservoir to the north, single family homes to the east, south, and west. I don't know if this is probably. That's the track map, right? But is it better, like. <laughs> <laughs> I think the bottom yeah, of that part is by dinner, north. right? Yeah, the right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, right, it's kind of the north arrow. There you yeah. go. There so, you go. Yeah. The north yeah. arrow's there. Um, this one is, this project, um, as mentioned, is a little bit further along. Um, just some background, this particular property uh, had a proposal in 1990, it was approved in 1993 for 52 homes, 52 units, and this layout um, not exactly copies it or mirrors it, but it's similar in the sense that what was approved in 1993 was Townhomes at the bottom and single family homes at the top. Uh, the number was 52. 
and it never got built. So at that point, <coughs> the owner or the developer, or whoever owned it at that time, went through an extensive process. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. They did the entire process I was there. to approve it, and to, they paid for plans. They did everything they needed to do and got it approved and never built it. Um, so that that dumbfounds me as to why they did it. <laughs> why they it's did called it. hydrogeology. It's a very, very soft hill. It, it, you're right, right. So what we've done, we've actually done our soil report on this. We do have, we've, obviously you see that we've done the, the survey map, the topography. Do you, do you have all Excuse the, me, who's the presenter? Are you the presenter or is, <laughs> is he the presenter? Quite you, what have you, uh, Mr. Chairman, mm -hmm. who's the presenter for this project? Go ahead. Noted. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, in this particular project, um, we're keeping the, the same kind of concept that was proposed in 1993. Um, obviously, with the 79 units instead of the 52 units. Here, um, the same concept is that you'll see, and I'm sorry if you can't see them from the back, but essentially, the homes are focused along the flattest part of the hill. The hill, this particular hill is flatter on top. Um, and leaving a lot of it undeveloped along the actual hillside itself. So, same thing with the bottom, focusing the development here and leaving a, a, a swath of land across here undeveloped. The, I, I have met with the city. Um, one of the things that the fire department, I believe, was the one that said that they didn't want to see was a road their road connecting down to Wadena. Um, and we agreed with them because what happens then is then it becomes a through street for people trying to cut through the neighborhood from here to here and then up and down. It also brings more traffic if it's just these homes here versus all these homes coming out. Um, right now, these would exit on Wadena and all these would exit on Barrett Road. Uh, there is no road that would connect the two sites, so the two areas um, with each other, um, and the fire department concurred. The, the fire department, their other reasoning was that their maximum slope for their trucks, I believe, is 20% uh, or so, and this would be more than that, so you would have to have significant grading. Um, and then to the crux of what we're requesting, and I apologize, I don't have, um, I don't think I have enough copies, but I'll just see. It's a, the, the committee is three. We, 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 we can share one. Um, I'll pass them down this, and there's three here. <laughs> and I'll pass them. I have a few extra, this I can pass down. Or, wait, sorry, this is my copy. <laughs> oh, no, no. So, as I mentioned, in 1993, a project was approved. At that time, there was a zone change that was completed at the same time. That particular zone change uh, it implemented what are, the city has what they're called Q conditions. That they're essentially conditions that were part of the development at that time. And in 2008, when the city went through its own zone change for the entire area, they, and I don't know, I argued this with the city already, <laughs> someone didn't bother to look at the document itself, and in a simple sentence said, you know, all the Q conditions from these ordinances. One of the ordinances was happened to be the 1993 ordinance that implemented these 20 uh, conditions on the property. And from then to now, uh, these most, the majority of these 20 conditions have been addressed through other conditions in the current zone, or they've been phased out because they're not allowed in the zoning now. And I'll give you an example. Um, in 1993, the plan was to do a 3,000 square foot daycare center here. And it was supposed to be a public daycare center. 
with the parking lot and you know traffic coming in and out. Right now, the RD6 zone does not permit a daycare center in the zone. So I argued that with staff, and I said your own current zone it conflicts with your with what's mandated in the, in the current uh, in the old zone in the old uh, ordinance. And I try to address it a simpler way, but at the end of the day, they suggested I go through a zone change, not to change the zone from RD6 to anything else, but to essentially eliminate those conditions that were established in 1993. Um, and a lot of them, as I mentioned, are addressed in other ways now. So for example, the graffiti removal, the city has other plans for graffiti removal. Uh, and this would be single family homes that would be maintained by the owners, or in the case of the townhomes, uh, still private property maintained by the property owners. Uh, grading, if you see number, if those who are, those who you had number two, so there's limitations on grading. Today, there, the city has, as you all know, the Northeast LA ordinance that has multiple pages on grading, not just a few sentences on grading. So essentially, these items have been cleaned up over the years, whether it's been items that are, are in conflict or items that are now more specifically addressed by the new zone. And the main thing, I guess, would be to clean up the way the city wanted it was to clean up the zone and officially remove that language from the text. Uh, and as it stands right now, um, as RD6, the lot size per unit is 6,000 square feet, which is actually more dense than the Klamath one, which is at 9,000 square feet. The 12 and 6. The, the density is based on the 6, the lot size is 12, 12,000, yes. Um, and the total number of units under the RD6 would be 79. And it's the same math, you know, you take the 10 point something acres and divide it by 6,000 and you get 79. Um, this was our, our, the architect that we hired, we hired the civil engineer, kind of the first attempt to lay it out. And I wanted to bring this forth to start getting input as well, to start seeing, you know, um, before we get too far ahead as well and, and too far into design and seeing we're done and then it's like, well, what about this? What about this? And, and I'm really well aware that up on top of Barrett Road, very narrow street, uh, no parking, and then down on Wadena, not as narrow, but still you have the parking issues. Um, so from my from hearing the other conversation going on, I think that's something that, that we plan to address no matter what is. The, is There's no cul-de-sac on Berlin. Unlike, <laughs> at least you can put one in on Medina, but not on Berlin. Oh, up here? Yeah. yeah. There's no cul-de-sac right. there. So it's all backing up. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's part partly what, you know, because it, it would be the same thing. Here, mm -hmm. we have to put the, the hammerhead for the fire department. So there is a hammerhead, but um, don't want to give someone the false impression that they're going to drive through and end up on the other side somewhere else. Okay, up on Barrett, is that actually going to be a street where, say, if the homes have a double garage and they can park in their driveway, will it be wide enough? And is there going to be a street with a curb and sidewalk so that if their guests can actually also park outside. Yeah, so. It's not like a private road, a narrow private road that all you can do right, is just no, wait it, it out. It, it, I, I, I don't have my, the scale here, but. Um, is it wide enough? It would accommodate, right now it's accommodating um, uh, two lanes either way, uh, sidewalks, and if I'm not mistaken, parking on the sidewalk. Um, but like I said, we haven't. Um, even the homes are just placeholders at this point. It hasn't been laid out, but given the conversation tonight, um, I can tell you that the, the right now what is included is the double white garage with the parking in the. So that's what, pretty much that. What did you mean by parking on the sidewalk? 
Um, I had to see how wide how wide the the road is, whether it's um, parking on both sides, parking on one side. Oh, you mean uh, parking on the curb out on the street? Right. right. But it's going to be a street. It's right. not going to be a private road. Right. And here, it'll. Um, it hasn't been decided yet whether it's it is a private street where the city's you know it's not going to be red zone or what have you. The only limitations would be whatever the fire department limits in terms of access. But there, again, the, the intent would be to minimize the impacts of parking on on the neighboring streets to by providing as much of it on site as possible. And if we you know our preference would be, and I know the people. Who would live there would be to have at least one lane, one side of the street for parking, kind of the same thing that it is down below. And again, okay, on the park, on the project earlier, you were here on LaGuardia and uh, Eastern. Okay, you see the way they landscaped it and stuff mm -hmm. with trees and stuff. Are you going to do anything with the hillside? Yeah, the so areas that are not uh, being used. Are you going to plant trees, make the green areas? Yeah, that, that would be the intent. Uh, also here at the entrance. Um, Barrett Road, would, the main entrance would be here. Barrett and Hall. Um, Barrett, yeah, and right here, there's there's like a little triangle that's privately owned. Um, I don't know who owns it. I know that a previous owner tried to approach them <laughs> for it. Um, but uh, we would like to landscape this whole entrance here if possible, including their property if they were just to say, if you landscape it and maintain it, can we do it? Um, this little sliver here because it it obviously doesn't help the property to have this you know unkept uh, dirt lot as you come in to your, to your main entrance this is pretty much just a, a, a dirt hillside here he, he has allowed some landscaping here long barrett he has okay so then, yeah. then maybe, maybe that's the first step but that was about 40, about 45 <laughs> years ago. Okay, so I, I haven't approached them yet, but our our hope would be that we can work something out where we can landscape it and maintain it. So I have a question on the, so I know that Aqua Red Road, it goes to the street to be planned to be about. This, this road is Hall. Right, right, right. right. So, but I know so Badina, this is Hall. On Badina, what would be, which, what, would street, what new street would be built this, there? Or where would, would it be built? This would be, okay. Right here, this would be more of a driveway into the garages. Um, it would be. It's like a back alley. I'm, I'm trying to think of yeah something. It's a U-shape. It's a rectangular circulation right. pattern. Right. And, and this, like I said, um, this part might change because if you're standing on the street here, to where this street would be is like I think eight feet high, and. Again, to limit it, the, the amount of grading just for the street, um, another plan has it where it's a cul-de-sac up here and it doesn't connect because you're talking about a significant difference in height. The city already told us that they're requiring a dedication to, right now it's only, the street's only this part and there is no cul-de-sac. It actually yeah. just, it goes and it stops and it goes straight. In the previous right plan, here. this cul-de-sac had a 25 foot high Retaining wall, yeah. <laughs> twenty-five foot deep. Plan. Yeah, and that's actually what the what what the engineer said. If you're going to do it, you're going to need a large retaining wall there. Um, so twenty-five foot high. <laughs> it, it's it's either or at this point. Um, but like I said, we're here early enough to start getting some input, um, and before we start, obviously putting a lot of time and effort into the, the individual um, homes. Um, the thought right now though is uh, up here the single family homes would be somewhere between you know 2,500 square feet to 3,500 square feet um, if we can get them down to whatever size we can get them to it depends on what will fit they're they're going to be two level uh, the architect has um, the way they, they envision it here is that this house on this side, the homes on this side, will look like one-story homes from the street, and it's essentially the garage. And if you go to the right, it'll be the garage and the house going upward, so that 
there's unobstructed view this way, and these homes would tear, would tear down, and these homes would tear up with the road in the middle. Uh, and these would be grouped in six. Um, so there's individual buildings, uh, six and four, so that they're not, it's not one big building, it's actually several smaller buildings with the units in them. And our plan is to obviously bring back, as we go through this and develop it, um, bring back, I think um, it's appropriate that we're kind of at the beginning of the year right now because this has a lot of work to do still. All of our environmental analysis, our traffic studies, those are, are going to start ramping up. So within this year, we might be seeing a lot of each other um, and hopefully I pre present more detail and more concrete stuff. And a lot prettier pictures than, than a lot of lines here. So I had a concern with the, uh, the house sizes. So you're saying 25 to 3,500 square feet per house? Yeah, up here. Yeah. Okay, so the houses in that area I don't think are anywhere near that size. So my concern is just going to be a visual aspect where you have, you know, a 1,200 square foot house and then you have a 3,000 square foot house literally hovering over it. Aesthetically, is not great, but also just like it doesn't it, it doesn't seem to fit with mm -hmm. the neighborhood. So, are you uh, is the three thousand just that, that because that's what you guys could is going to economically work out for you guys? It, it's it's both, um, but it hasn't. It's not set in stone as of okay. yet. It, it, a lot of it has to do with the grading as well, okay. because yeah. the lots the lot depth is not a problem. We have plenty of depth, and as you see here. The lots kind of extend for all the way down, and that's just for to keep HOA costs from being too, mm -hmm. you know, exorbitant by having so much private um, undeveloped property or or a, a parcel that's considered um, common common property, where your HOA fees would be super high to maintain the entire thing, as opposed to every owner maintaining their piece of their piece of property. I live further down on Barrett. Okay, the neighbors I talked to and everybody else, even further up, almost to Hall Street. Okay, they don't. They prefer larger homes. This, this just is your question. Okay. There are already larger homes up there. Okay. Okay. So they would prefer larger homes because the last thing they want is for the city to come in and build low-income housing, which will turn into a project and turn into a, you know a gang-infested area. So on Barrett, we don't mind the big, large homes. They don't bring the gangs, they don't bring in the riffraff, everything that goes with it. You know, if they're gonna have their parking, they're not gonna take anyone else's parking on the street, you know. Yep, I have two questions. Okay, in regards to these homes, how much Property taxes could be brought into the communities by those ones. They're not brought, the taxes doesn't go. <laughs> It'll be. <laughs> yeah, no, I just want to know. Bro. I haven't done that math. I know uh, you guys will check it, so I won't even speculate. Um, I can get that information okay. to you because we have, I, I know, um, and you mentioned this, that the times that I've been up here um, along Barrett this way, I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of renovations, a lot of people either completely remodeling the home or adding on to their homes. So I know the values right now are going up. And this is independent of the, any project <coughs> up here. A lot of, um, every time I've been in there, there's construction at, at, at least one home or two homes on Barrett Road down, down the way. So I know that there's incentive on, without this, for people to invest back into their property. And that is causing property values to go up. Here, um, obviously, it would be on the higher end. I'm assuming of those values that are that they're going to be getting down over here on, on, on these other properties. Five, so one point five million each, about five hundred dollars a square foot. And that's you're saying that's what they're getting right now. Oh so, yeah. Okay. My second part to the question was. Is the developer going to be willing to work with the community and neighbors surrounding no. that, that area? No, they want to form a homeowners association. 
for people no, to no, buy no, one. No, 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 that's not my question. My question is, <laughs> is a developer willing to work with the local neighborhoods to improve the street, bring in trees? I don't think street uh, street trees are would be a problem as long as the city, you know, I, I don't know where we could put trees. I'm talking along, along, the, uh, along Garrett Road, coming up on Barrett Road, and adding some more trees down to the medium. That's if the developer is willing to Oh, you're saying down below? Yeah. Down, uh, the, down. That's what I want. Yeah. I want more trees up in that area. So it could be like South Pasadena. If you get out the freeway, you come in the valley, and you go through South Pasadena, 20 degrees cooler. Yeah. Damn. What is wrong with more trees in the area? Yeah. It creates a green canopy. Yeah. And it makes it cooler in the summer, especially seniors or somebody that doesn't have air conditioning. And it, and it cleans the, the air, the environment. I don't, I don't see why something wouldn't be, be worked out on. As long as the city, if it's on public land, then the city would have to sign off on it. There's no trees on the property right now, right? No, there, All right. there, there are there's protected trees on the site. Well, we'll we'll have a we'll have a study done, but yeah. right now there's a Is lot of like, uh, there's brush. There's some right here, and then back down here. We'll. Uh, You're not talking about these black <laughs> walnut trees. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's protected. Black Those walnut are, black walnut are protected. protected. The black walnut, black walnut trees are a hazard. They and start oaks. fires in the summertime. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with that, but they are protected by the Department of Public Works. But the builder also has the right. To build. To build. Yeah. He also has a right that, will have, if, depending on the trees, yeah. because you can't cut them down as it's a four inch diameter on the black yeah. walnuts. Okay. But he has he can replace those trees yeah. with other type of trees, more conducive to the environment. Yeah. I'm curious about where would the hall route be for this project? Would that be on Wadena and Guardia? The, if we're talking about Dirt from down here, more than likely Wadena. Dirt from up here, more than likely Barrett. Barrett Hall. Um, <laughs> Barrett, yeah. Um, Hall. Can't, 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 go down. Down. can't go down Hall. Yeah. Barrett, yeah. Forget it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Barrett. Um, yeah. Yeah. And there really isn't many options uh, in the, here because there's only two ways in and two ways out. Yeah, and is Barrett wide enough to, be, to qualify as a Hall route? Well, I need to pass. We'll find out, yeah. We're not the first to build up there, so sure. there's been there's been construction. Try to build. Yeah. Um, living on there and stuff, the only thing I, I mean, it hasn't bothered me the trucks when they could, they haul the dirt, whatever, would be depending. You know, you're going to be pulling out quite a bit of dirt. Would be that you are able to control traffic going up and down. In other words, you're going to have flagmen right. with their stop signs and whatever. You know. Radio. Yes. Right. That that would be the you know one of the. And I'm saying. sure I'm sure and having done this in other cities, um, cities mandate a plan when you do any kind of construction like this. Um, Building and safety has a requirement for haul routes, right. staging areas, and supply routes. Right. For yeah. Because there's going to be a lot of concrete coming up there. And they won't issue your permit unless all those plans have been approved simultaneously. So. Uh, and it's a product of the building and safety commissioners. Thank you, Tom. And at this point, at this point, there we haven't gone that far. We haven't um, submitted anything to building and safety. The only thing that I've done with the city and the other departments is I've had a, a <coughs> kind of a department-wide meeting where it was water and power, fire department, building and safety, planning, um, housing. And I'm trying to remember the department, uh, Bureau of Engineering, and they kind of went around the room and said, if you want to build there, you know, make sure you have this, this, and this, and this, this, and this, and this, this, and this. So they've got given input, but that was based on no plans, based on, you know, not nothing concrete yet. No numbers. Right. So at this point, it really is just seeing first of all what 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 could might work. This lead to the next step which is now the engineers working with this to see what the cut and fill is going to be. How much dirt can stay, how much dirt has to go, um, and we're trying to balance that number as much as possible. And any well, project is going to have upper parts, the hillside slopes, it's all going to be unusable fill because it's shale. And right. soft shale. In the report did see that, that the, the shale was up on top. So we, we are aware of that and 
obviously it's not it's in our best interest to build something that's going to last um, something that's going to be safe and um, something that obviously isn't going to hurt anybody or fall or or do anything like that where um, you know we just spent a lot of money on something that's not going to last. One of the issues may be that you have to put in all public access and facilities before you start building. Well the subdivision map act requires us to either put them in or put a bond up for them. So one of the two um, more than likely it'll be in rather than a bond um, but the city when you do a, a subdivision um, that's a standard requirement for any site. All right, we have time for like two more questions because then we're going to run out. We're going to run. We're going to run out of time. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> not much fun. Any other questions? Oh. Oh. Well, it's, it's not really a question. Is you know, right across from Barrett on the other side mm -hmm. is Elephant Hill. You know, you get the city, the, the community didn't want them to build. The developer, Mr. Foot. Okay, the city bought the property. It sits up there and it's turned into a dump with the homeless up there. You know. I mean, this would prevent this to happen over here also, because there, there's we cannot just say, oh, we want to protect the hills. The develop the, the owners have a right to build, mm -hmm. okay? You know, it, it's nice if they work with the community and everything, but it, it's like you can't expect the city to purchase all these hills, you know, because you, you want to keep them empty. And it's a form of anti-gentrification, mm -hmm. and which is discrimination. Mm -hmm. And I personally don't like the open hills anymore. Somebody said we could have open space where we could walk there. Well, listen, I don't even bring my son when he's with me to any of these damn parks around here <laughs> because we got shot at at two thirty in the afternoon. So, do you guys want open space for what? So these gangbangers could shoot at you? I'm sorry. But when my son's with me, take him out of the city and never bring him into El Sereno to go anywhere. Anywhere. Not even to the McDonald's where somebody took a dump in a slide and he was five years old and he went to tell the manager. Somebody took a dump and the manager said, well, that's the way it is around here. So where do we go? We go out of town. We go out of town because I don't want him to be shot at again. And, and one, one of the things is, you know what, you bring in housing, and these people have expendable income. Yes, we want, we want a Walgreens. Yes, we want a Starbucks or whatever. I've lived here since I was five years old. I'm 62 now. The neighborhood hasn't changed very much. You know, when you bring expendable income, you bring in more housing, you're going to be able to attract these businesses. Okay. Uh, one last note. Um, I know because it's been mentioned a couple of times, even in the prior presentation, um, I do want to say, though, the, the neither property owner was proposing to do um, like low income housing on either site, whether it be this one or, that, or the climate one. However, um, the city, by virtue of the subdivision, whenever you're asking for an entitlement, the city passed a, a regulation, I can't remember if it was uh, two years ago or more, but it's measure JJJ, which it imposes restrictions on the minute you go and ask for you know any entitlement they'll impose something on you on your property a development like this a subdivision so there will be something at this point we don't know you know the extent of it yet but we would have to comply with measure JJJ and that's one thing that the planning staff has already told me and so what one issue will be this is within one quarter mile of a high traffic transit corridor and thereby is within the range of a transit oriented community and thereby for whatever comes out of Sacramento for Senate Bill 50. And, and we are aware they, they and the that means was you mentioned. can go up to five floors. They did mention that um, some of those incentives we necessarily wouldn't be interested in. Um, <laughs> Not going five stories, but um, if you can sell it, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you, Gordon. Thank you. So, so um, I'll be back for sure, um, and then um, 
Is there a way to, I guess, if people have want, have questions or more input, can they just contact you? Uh, no, just if you, if you want, uh, give, give them your email. You give them your email. You give them your email. Can you do an email blast? I can do an email blast. Yeah, I don't have an email, I can do an email blast. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Which will be so, like. What's your time, I mean, the okay. proposed timeline for this, for this project that you have? Like, like, we're looking at in a year, two years? Um, I would say that in this, this 2019, we hope to get through. Um, obviously, site design um, and the all the, the needed studies, the environmental stuff. So, and that is pretty extensive, so it takes some time. Um, but I don't want to wait till you know <laughs> I come back in December and say, "Hey, look, we're done. <laughs> we we caught up." Yeah. Um, along the way, as long as as long as we can, the first obstacle is obviously the the, the civil engineer figuring out how much dirt is cutting and how much is filling. And then we can now settle more on a site plan. And then I can we can start saying, okay, this is our site plan. Now we can start designing up for it. And, and your storm drains will be submitted. Yeah, there there are existing storm drains that yeah. come down from here to here, and then one here here. Yeah. Um, so we say within the year we hope to um, get through some of the major milestones. Um, by this time next year, hopefully we will be presenting, getting ready to go before you. Um, obviously, the, the planning commission and the city council, and so forth. Plum. Right, the plum. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.